Hi. All right, so, hello. Today, let's um, briefly take a look at four women that have been convicted for murder. These particular four have been supersized and sensationalized by the media because of their crimes, you know, but it shows their crime in great detail. The crimes are brutal and the lack of remorse. Even with the clear evidence, uh, decades later, you know, for at least three of them, is quite disturbing. Now, when I say that, I mean I don't know what's worse. The details of how horrific their crime or just you know, the straight face and disregard entirely for what they have done. I have come across some profound pathological liars that I almost believe they must convince themselves of their own lies, you know, and love to tell stories. Um, these are the posers that love to just get interviewed. You know, they talk a great deal about themselves, trying to convince, you know, you of their alternate universe. Um, they have happily acquired for themselves to escape the shame, actually, of what they were convicted for. You know, years later, they still will only practice self-preservation and clearly are not God-fearing or remorseful. They even expect to be somehow given a pardon and let go from their sentence. I find it terrifying that they expect freedom to, you know, somehow be able to be living a normal life after viciously ending, you know, the life of another. After I share with you their stories and sentences briefly, I will leave you to decide and come to your own conclusions of what you think should still happen to these women years later after their notorious crimes and what or how justice, you know, should be served. Uh, so let's take a closer look. Um, it's reunion time for convict number one, and not just for the high school friends. Uh, Susan Smith is coming up for parole 30 years after murdering her two young sons by drowning them in a lake. She has attracted the attention of many men while behind bars. Now, one has turned even against her. Uh, I'm going to even try to answer the why of questions. So many men um, are attracted to this murderer, convicted even of killing her own children because she is the most notorious woman, you know, known of the 21st century uh, for her crime. I remember this case like it was yesterday. You know, she was 22 years old in 1994 when she told police in South Carolina that quote a black man had carjacked her and took her car with her two young sons in the back seat. Michael was three years old and uh, it was Alexander who was just four, 14 months. Uh, the search set off um, a national media frenzy. You know, she gets on camera begging for whoever took her babies to please bring them back, you know, for days. Then on day nine, you know, her car was pulled from John Deere Lake with her two babies still strapped in the back seat. During the interrogation, excuse me, and questions from the public, she was just fine when she was getting the accolades and the sympathy, but when they started questioning her a little more persistently, you know, that is when she started cracking under the pressure. The inconsistencies, uh, you know, began to come to the forefront as well. 
The thing is that law enforcement always do a dual investigation. You know, you tell them an alien took your baby even, they will work on the alien story and create a case. However, they are also going to check the logical things like, you know, immediate family members to the victim or victims as it be. They keep working, you know, like this because ultimately the truth does come sooner rather than later. A jury convicted uh, her, and despite seeking the death penalty, she was sentenced to life in prison. Then, you know, she claimed she had a psychotic breakdown. She even garnered some sympathy uh, because she claimed her stepfather had sexually abused her. Spoiler alert, when she goes before the parole board, she is not looking so good. She has not been a model prisoner, to say the least. She had sex with a corrections officer in the jail. She also got caught with drugs. Um, she hasn't earned any educational credits during her time in prison. So almost 30 years and no desire to educate yourself? She did a little work in both landscape an office clerk, but she has kept most busy with the men on the outside who want to date her if she is released. Being a con artist, you know, is a full-time job in itself. It leaked out that she wrote to one man saying uh, that it would that she would be a good, sorry, stepmom, and I that she could see, you know, herself being around kids. Yikes! She pulls the whole scam on talking to multiple men, saying to each the same lies, you know. Uh, it's only me and you, and can you even give me a little money? No repentance and um, real justice for her two boys is for her to stay where she is till she dies. No parole and no leniency. I pray myself to God, even again right now, um, she wasn't... Uh, being faithful, though, one of her suitors said when he found her, or found out, I mean, um, he was not the only man she was dating by mail. He said, quote, I saw her in the news that she was talking to other guys, so I looked into it myself. He said he actually went as far as getting the transcripts and was disappointed to say the least. I don't know how you go about actually doing that. I am going to have to look into it later. I'll give you an update. But he goes on to say that she's uh, always says she didn't want to ask for anything, but she'd give hints and she'd accept anything um, I'd give her happily. <laughs> I loved her, he says, but I don't know if she loved me, even though she said so. I don't think she is capable of loving anybody but herself. She always wanted something from me. You know, we are not men to her, we're marks. She's always figuring out what she can get. All she does, you know, is take, take, take. She tells, you know, other people... Uh, you know, Susan Smith, though, is actually saying, um, but I would ask him, you know, the, this, dude, you're talking about a woman who murdered her own babies in prison. Just a question, not a judgment. But what kind of person, you know, has an affair with a convicted murderer who is in prison? Killing children, you know, is okay, but cheating, that crosses the line for you, huh? Um, if someone is subjected to the death penalty, the possibility of parole should never be on the table. If anyone is asking, my opinion, but it's an educated one, you know, um, though, and I certainly do my homework, I'm not worried, you know, I doubt anyone will, you know, argue with me. You know, that she has not paid um, her debt to society. On the contrary, Papa God has lit her up like a light bright, hasn't he? Like a, uh, Because 
you know, these men, you know, she is lying to and getting money from is her committing more crimes and hurting more people. I don't know all the rules um, by heart, but I'm pretty sure if you commit a crime and go to jail, uh, you don't keep committing crimes while you are in jail and possibly even ask if you can still get out, <laughs> right? Anyway, the only other suggestion I would offer is that her sentence should have been life without parole. I mean, you wait to impose the sentence, you know, though after one has done a considerable amount of time and see what they are doing, you know, during, should, um, you know, she didn't even bother to go to school and learn something or better you know, get involved with helping, not harming others in 30 years. You know, she didn't write a book or learn some new tricks even. I'm stuck between the two of them, you know, and their choices. Because also, how desperate can you be to want and even spend hundreds of dollars on a woman who committed such a horrible crime? It is no money, you know, she gets to even go towards her case, you know. It's just so she can buy for herself makeup and what, snacks and sweets, whatever, you know, so she can basically just shop like she does. Uh, because, let's face it, um, that is all she is ever thinking about is herself, right? It bothers me, though, because uh, it even feels like rewarding her you know, get in the comments and let me know if you think it's fair when, you know, this kind of criminal can still be able to do this. Don't tell me about civil rights because nine times out of ten, um, you know, they're cons. Taking other people's money by lying, even getting people to worship her and get generous quantities of whatever she wants so she can, what, be happy? Meantime, I'm going to be sick, so let's move on. <laughs> Let me grab a sip of water. Um, so, but let me give give you a quick case to compare to. Um, Andrea Jackson, another mother and woman who snapped under the weight of her trauma of past abuse even, and her addictions fueled her rage. Uh, she shot and killed a police officer who was trying to put her in his car with him. She admitted she was drunk and high, and in her stupor, she believed he was going to rape her. She didn't want to get in the back seat because uh, apparently that is where the rape had occurred, being forced into, you know, a back seat before. So her original sentence was death row. So she was sent away and kept away from everybody. You know, no general population for her, just segregation for years. You know, when you are kept like that, locked in a room 24 hours a day, you know, for every day, a prisoner on death row uh, means, you know, one thing. And the fear is paralyzing, you know, knowing that every day you wake up, the prison um, you are in, you know, the people that run it anyway, are ordered to kill you. Her death warrant was issued. She was transported to the spot where they do the executions, you know. Only hours before she was supposed to die uh, by electrocution, you know, a 120-day stay was issued. New evidence was presented um, by her defense that proved, you know, she was not a cold-blooded killer. The Supreme Court, though, um, does order a case review. After 15 years, her sentence was then commuted to life without parole. She says her time on death row gave her a chance to heal the trauma she had, has had as a child and then as a young adult, too. You know, she came to know God and build a real relationship with him and to grow even where she was all those years. She still has to live the rest of her life in jail knowing her fate. Um, you know, she committed murder, but she is owning, you know, the responsibility of her crime and, you know, talking about it openly.
planes going over loud. Um, and even helping, you know, others, you know, now who have similar trauma. She says she uh, is a better person now, you know, and she accepts that what she did was wrong, you know, that she feels she even deserves to be in prison, but, you know, grateful she's not going to be put to death and plans to help others till, you know, she dies naturally. So, judges, uh, but also parole officers, look to weigh the circumstances of the evidence, is my point, of the crime, and then, you know, their behavior while the sentence is being carried out. It can continue to come back again, you know, to asking, does the person deserve the punishment and or freedom even, in a sense, you know, after their crime, even decades later. Now, Linda Cardi, she is so proud of herself on how well she can sing Amazing Grace and can sweet talk herself and anyone else into how completely innocent she is and even still saying that she was set up you know is why she currently still sits on death row today in Texas in February of 2002 a lot of planes today she was sentenced to death for the abduction and murder of 20 year old Juana Rodriguez in order to steal her newborn son just after she delivered. She was sitting on this woman, waiting to take her baby. Linda Cardi and three other co-defendants invaded this new mom's home and kidnapped her and her new son. The victim subsequently died of suffocation, but the baby was found unharmed. I watched the interrogation. She told herself clearly that the only way to save her failing marriage was to fabricate a pregnancy. She did the work of lying to others, you know, stocking, stocking, excuse me, up on baby things and monitoring, uh, you know, her pregnant neighbor. She went as far as to say she was with Uh, Or, oh no, she was on the brink of giving birth, she told her husband, uh, you know, that she was estranged from. And it will most likely be even happening, you know, giving birth tomorrow was the last thing that she told him. Um, You know, right before the murder. But um, she entangled this new mom, though, into her web of deceit, you know, tragically losing her life and the opportunity even to experience motherhood, you know, with her newborn, was what, four days old, her son? Um, An innocent child, you know, basically was left without his mother. You know, this serves as a tragic reminder of the haunted depths that some individuals are willing to go in pursuit of their own desires and the profound and lasting impact such actions have on the lives of others. The three men she had um, invade that young mother, though, um, promising a drug bust, apparently, were named uh, Gerald, Chris, and I think it was Colton was the other one, that later, um, you know, that she said she... Uh, oh, that the three of them framed her. Sorry. 
The overall intent either, you know, way was sinister, you know, expecting drugs, but it turning uh, into an abduction and then a murder, right? So, anyway, my point is they, you know, taped up and suffocated that mother to death, and she was found dead in the trunk of uh, Linda Cardi's car, and the baby was claimed as a welcomed, you know, surprise. Yet, she was prepared for and planned to pretend to just giving birth and pass the baby off as, as her own, you know. In essence, her case transcends the individual circumstances of, you know, her car incarceration, you know. It has become a um, documentary even um, that airs on the Internet with uh, the district attorney, Susanna Reed. You know, she embarks on this journey to, like, Texas to personally meet Linda Cardi, you know, offering viewers a look and interviews, you know, uh, her, that she's given the police custody, the interrogation, you know, all the footage of her entire case even um, as she waits, awaits, I mean, her, her demise. The prosecutor and uh, officials, you know, remain convinced of her guilt that the evidence of her crime, you know, remains consistent with, you know, her as the ringleader and even the orchestrator of the whole defense. You know, it just shows the emotional turmoil it places on many others, including even her own family as well. Um, and many, you know, expert... I would say perspectives. Um, so finally, we have uh, 1991 capital punishment, the first of it, uh, even uh, also of a female serial killer, Eileen Warnos. She murdered seven uh, men and got the death penalty for her sentence of punishment. Uh, her troubled past. And the trauma she endured is a cautionary tale. It was brought to life and provided glimpses into what, you know, shaped her dark path. You know, the complex web of psychological, emotional, and societal influence, you know, that contributed to her descent into violence, you know, cannot be overlooked um, although they do not absolve her of the responsibility of her actions, you know, but she remains a controversial figure and, you know, there's much discussion still out the nature of her crimes, you know, capital punishment, another uh, systemic failure, you know, allowed her life to dwindle to such a severe degree my concern is the greater number of the guilty, even when found, you know, to be murderers and all the evidence is present, that they will still go to great lengths to spend state's money for every appeal possible. You know, they will claim secrets not heard or whatever, you know, it takes to be heard and seen. They don't want to repent, even be left alone with their thoughts about their actions, you know. Yes, it's true. We find many Americans in a broken or failed system. But do you know uh, or want to know what I think is worse? Real demons will use their last breath to save their face when what they should be more worried about is who is going to save their soul, right? <laughs> All right, guys, that's all for today. I hope this helps. Bye, guys. Talk to you soon.